rise up this morning to smile at the rising sun and three little birds and breakfast with Bob. Thank you, Poncho Man. Welcome, everybody. This is Breakfast with Bob, St. George Edition. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spa, Zion's Bank, Quintana Room, Ford Form Smart Swim Goggles, Clash Endurance, Premium Plus Sports, and, of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, Nikki Bartlett, who loves the hills here, right? Hi, Bob. Thanks very much for having me on, and I absolutely love the hills, and it's amazing to be back here. Yeah, you, you came here for 70.3 Worlds, right? I did. It uh, yeah. feels like we haven't been away. Um, we have an amazing homestay here. They're very welcoming, um, and we just feel like a part of their family, and it feels so nice to be back. So for somebody who specialized in track and field and hockey <laughs> and fell in love with rowing, and how the heck did you end up <laughs> getting in the triathlon? <laughs> Jack of all trades. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, I was out injured rowing, and my friend was like, oh, I'm doing this half Iron Man. And I was like, what the hell is that? Yeah. Um, yeah. And she explained it. And I was like, oh, no thanks. And she was like, come along, you should do it. And I was like, well, I can't swim. There's no chance. And anyway, she pulled my leg, and I was doing it, and I loved it, and never looked back. <laughs> and, and, it was, you, and not only have you been doing triathlon, but you had the opportunity to go to Tokyo. Yes, I did. Um, we went to Paralympic Games last year and uh, absolutely phenomenal experience. And yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, talk a little bit about that, about, well, first, <coughs> guiding. I don't think people understand how difficult that is. And just the partnership that, uh, that you have with that visually impaired athlete. And I mean, you are basically her eyes for that day. And there's a lot of responsibility to go along with that. Yeah, there's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of um, practice, teamwork element, a lot of yeah, a lot of practice on the course. Um, you're tethered in the swim, and um, like <laughs> like when you go around the boy, uh, my point in contact was to hit Allison over the head. That's when she knew we were going around the boy. <laughs> you hit her in the head. Yeah, literally hit her on the head. <laughs> and then you have other touch. I won't give all the, all her tactics away, but other yes. other communications of feel um, of what that means that you're the scenario you're in right. in the race. Um, so yeah, it's a very unique experience. And you guys were two seconds out of bronze? Yeah, we were. Um, <laughs> I'm probably yeah. good I brought that up again, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm pleased to. <laughs> 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 no, uh, Alison had a, a pretty bad injury going into the race, and uh, to be honest, it just felt like it was a bit of a, a miracle getting on the start line in the end. So um, yeah, I was very grateful to be there and be racing. It's funny when you get to a, a race like that, because there's two ways to look at it. One is that, you know, we're here to win. And yeah. another is when you're dealing with the injuries like Alison was dealing with, it's yeah. We are just so grateful because yeah. I'm sure it was nip and tuck just getting there. Yeah, definitely. And if I can relate it to being here now, it's it's pretty identical because I've had a pretty rough winter. But um, you have yeah. talk a little bit about that. Um, so not long after coming back from here, really, I went to Ironman Lanzarote 70.3 and did a training camp in that race, and I came back and got COVID pretty much straight away, um, just before my last race of the season in yeah. October. Um, and pretty soon after that, I felt felt like it was a bit of a long COVID kind of scenario where I got uh, insane neural pain like nine out of ten neural pain in my high hamstring um oh. all down all the time all, all the time down my sciatica as well and that was pretty ruled me out for like three months of biking and running and all I could do was swim um and there was even points where I couldn't swim in the end so I went so pretty much from like November till and I'm talking like mid-Feb yeah um I went on some pretty strong medication and uh that that kind of sorted me out um what was it I don't know, a bit of high hamstring tendinopathy mixed with sciatica nerve issue, but then the tendinopathy I felt like went, because when I started to try and run again, I barely made two minutes, um, the sciatica nerve pain was insane um, so I couldn't sit, I couldn't walk the dog I couldn't run, couldn't bike couldn't do normal life things um, could I you sleep? No, sleeping was horrendous oh. um, so I could only swim, which I literally had to try and fall in love with swimming because it's not my favorite. Um, I was in the pool like, I was like, well, if this is all I can do, I'm going to nail it. So I was in the pool like 12, 14 hours a week. And it got to a point where the neural pain got so bad I couldn't swim. So then that's when I had to really seek other advice. Uh, had went through a lot of scans, right. I think four different MRI scans. Oh my God. People were like, it could be a fracture somewhere. I was like, I can't have fractured myself. I've been lying in bed all the time. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was just really bad neural pain. Uh, luckily, it's gone. So from February, I've been kind of, I had to load um, in the gym before I could walk again and then I had to walk a certain amount before I could walk run then I had to walk and then I could run again so you were starting from scratch yeah pretty much but luckily before 
catching COVID in October. I've had a good two, three years without any injury or illness. Right. Um, so I'm really lucky from that aspect. Um, so I, I, I do believe in accumulated load of training and um, I always had my heart set on coming back here. Everyone else is like, you are an idiot. Like it's February and you're not even like walking. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm definitely going to be ready on that start line in St. George. And I've done that, so I'm proud. But I'm not just here to take part. I'm definitely here to compete. I was going to say, because... Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't come just to, to get around the course. No, no, no. This is the Ironman World Championship. Exactly. It's the Ironman World Championship. And you can't just jog around this course. You won't make it up all the hills. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm here to compete. And I'm really excited. This course has so much character. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just oozes so much energy and... I'm, I feel very fit. I've displayed in training, kind of, uh, I'd say training sessions I've not really produced before as well. Um, so I feel like I'm ready to take it on. So I say you feel like you're going better than you've been yeah, before. Yeah, maybe the rest did me good. There you go. <laughs> and it made me uh, concentrate solely on one of the my weakest disciplines. So Was it swimming? Yeah, it is. And so you feel like you've become a better swimmer? I'm definitely a better swimmer. Yeah. Definitely a better swimmer? Definitely a better swimmer. And you said this. I think you summed it up perfectly. This course has character. Oh, like so each much. part of it. The water's cold. Yeah. Oh the my god, the water is <laughs> so. I hate. Like I actually choose races where it's not below eighteen degrees water temperature because yeah. I hate being cold in the water. And here it's like fourteen and a half. I was like, what's going on? Because like when we're here in September, it's not wetsuit. Right. Um. So when everyone's like the water was cold, I was like, oh, it'd be all right. And I got in. I was like, this is not okay. <laughs> but it's beautiful. So. Um, I bet some of my best swims have come from cold swims because my mentality is get me out of get here. It, I'm swimming <laughs> for your life. It's a yeah, little different deal. Yeah. So, yeah, so, um, so I'm going to have to swim very hard uh, just to keep warm. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. When we got into the sport, there were no wetsuits. Yeah. Right? So it, it, I, we raced in Bahamas. We raced in mm. Kona. You know, you go to warm places. That's yeah, where you – triathlon's not for going to, you know – going to Norway and, and places like that in cold <laughs> water, Greenland and Iceland and oh, places yeah. with cold water. You want to swim where it's warm. I know. It's tropical, you what, fish. What, yeah. You want to see things. You want to see the turtles and uh, the dolphins. Uh, where, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, so I'll, I'll look forward to getting out of the water <laughs> on race day and getting warm. Um, so but yeah. what's nice about this is it's this isn't your typical – you know, 112 miles, put your head down and just yeah. go. And then same thing with the run. You got over 7,000 feet of climbing on a bike. You got 1,500 feet of climbing on a run. Yeah. It's strategy. It's, yeah. you know, it, it, because the course does have character. You've got to, you know, you got to be thinking throughout the day. Oh, definitely. And uh, this one course excites me a lot. Um, and I think if you're excited on that start line, then you're going to get the best out of yourself. So, yeah, this course yeah just can't wait to get out there like I literally just like I can remember on Friday last week I was like I wish it was tomorrow <laughs> I was like come on <laughs> let it be race day but have you yeah. had a race where you spent a full solid week like this training for the event or two weeks before uh probably world 70.3 last year yeah. because um it's cold in the UK my parents still have the heating on it's May standard yeah. UK weather right. um I took myself off actually I have not really lived in the UK really this year so far um so I've absolutely nearly maximized my Brexit days away in Europe. Um, so we came out here early just to get used to the heat and, you know, the little bit of altitude you experience. Um, and we love being here, like, just like Bex loves running in the trails. Right. I have to wait until after the race so I can do that because I'm really clumsy. Race week, I fall over. I don't know why. Like, every race week, I fall over. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it ends in an injury. Sometimes I, just, I have to be careful race week. I just get really clumsy. So I always look at a race like this that like has a lot of hills. I look yeah. at, at what people have done in the past. And 2019 Ironman Lanzarote, which mm. Lanzarote, yeah. which is one of the toughest races on the planet. Yeah, it is. I think that transfers here. You? Yeah, I hope so because um I love that place. Like it's a bit marmite, uh Lanzarote. Um I love it. I went actually I took myself there for two and a half weeks. To train. To train and I just was like, I'm gonna go on my own. I just need to get my head down and see what sessions I can produce. Because yes. Bex was like, I, you need to tick kind of some of these boxes to go to, to Worlds. And I was like, right then. Because uh, all along, Bex was a bit like, this ain't gonna happen. You just need to forget the World Champs. And I was like, no, my heart is on the World Champs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do everything I can. I thought, I know where a place where, which gets me fit, and that's Lanzarote. So I went there, went on my own. I was looked after really well at the hotel I was at. Um, and yeah, just produced some really good sessions. I think the one which really gave me confidence, it was like a four hour bike ride with yes. three one hour efforts. And then I did an hour runoff. 
uh, just a bit slower than 70.3 runner, uh, 70.3 pace. Um, I felt really easy and felt really good. And I was like, I, I feel like I'm ready to go. Um, but to be honest, we didn't put the we didn't book our flights until a week before we came. <laughs> just to make <laughs> so sure. Just to make sure because like yeah, like there's quite a few people dropping out, and I was like, you know, this will be my luck. I've had all winter off. I get myself fit. Just wait until I get something else go wrong. But luckily, nothing's gone wrong so far. Just got to get myself to race day now. That is so cool. Yeah. yeah so uh, when you look at you know the, that 2018 to 19, you were really just grounding in the form when COVID hit and yeah. put everything on hold. Yeah. How did you deal with that? Um, I think I was at first a bit in denial because <laughs> um, I was meant to go to I'm on South Africa literally about a week before. Oh, that's the right. Whole they canceled it right at the end. Yeah, and I was like fit and ready to go to that, and and then I was like, God, what is this? you know this new world we're living in for a bit um so i just took any opportunity which came so i got involved in all the i'm vrs uh, there was quite a few local uk races mm -hmm. like how yes you there was won one that. In outlaw yep. mm -hmm. um and i just got stuck into anything i could i was like right yeah and i was like right let's use this time to whatever you can really um i did a bit of dressing up and running around the streets to make some people smile that seemed to work like i don't know where that idea came from i was just i couldn't sleep at night and I went back to wake up the next morning. I was like, I've ordered a, uh, a fancy dress costume. She's like, what are you on about? And I was like, I've ordered Spider-Man. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I, just, I, went, I just went and did all my runs as Spider-Man for like the first six to eight weeks in lockdown. And like... The just because. Just because. Right. Like, just because I'm a bit of a randomer as well. Right, so. yes. And yeah, it just made people smile. So, and we... And then got asked to do birthday party runs. <laughs> so it became, it, it became, became a little bit of a thing. And then, thing. I got, and then I got Bex involved and she went around as Robin. And then So you were Batman. You were, wait, wait. You were Spider-Man and, and Robin? <laughs> yeah, we were Spider-Man and Robin. And then like we have all these trails ne next to our house and we love trail running. So we're like, oh, we'll just go through the trails. So like the people, we and this one uh, couple, like, we have seen everything. <laughs> We were in the middle of nowhere, and they just and we just pop out as Robin and Spider-Man. Isn't it the best, being yeah. in a costume? Yeah, it's amazing. Running in the costume is amazing. You know what um, you would love? We should get you an Elvis outfit, because be we uh, yeah. we actually had 209 of us at, at uh, Rock and Roll Las Vegas oh, uh, wow. dressed as Elvis. My, yeah. my wife and I actually renewed our vows at the... Oh, uh, really? Yep, at the, they had a run-through wedding chapel at oh. mile four of the yeah it's running in costume is the best it is so good and then i did santa like a massive blow up santa around yeah, christmas yeah, yeah. time not uh, unfortunately i couldn't do this christmas time because it wasn't running uh, but then i just went like i did it the year before and just went around um and it's really hard like 20 30 minutes because you're like this oh it's hard i know yeah like blows up out here <laughs> um, that is yeah so cool. fancy dress running is amazing so um yeah, I, w I probably won't do it on race day, but uh, maybe well, another time. You could bring Spider-Man out for yeah, maybe the last 10K. Be a bit 10K. hot, but it's, it's, I actually, when um, lockdown was happening, I was like, right, I'm going to go for Spider-Man world record for the marathon. I think it's like two hours, 40-something. I was like, I can do that. Yeah. But then everything started opening up, and I was like, okay, maybe I'll save a marathon for off the bike. Um, but yeah, I was really looking into doing the Iron Man well, we at Spider-Man world record. We brought, uh, <laughs> um, uh, we, we brought an athlete to Vegas. Yeah. to break the, ro the Elvis world record. Oh, really? Did yeah, they do and it? Not, yes, he did. And oh, not amazing. only Mike Wardian, and he not only broke the record, yeah. he, um, uh, he, he, I mean, he, he broke the, the Elvis record. He won the race, oh, dressed wow. as Elvis, on the strip in Vegas. It was the coolest thing ever. That is awesome. See, yeah. you, you might need to check in. I reckon that, like, after this career, in like... Absolutely. I'm going to say 10 years' time. Beck's always last when I say that, but I feel like I'm just starting. Um, I feel young. Well, you've been, you haven't been in the sport that long. No, I haven't been in the sport that long, and I love it. Like, I wake up every day excited, even more so now because I've had so much time off. Um, and, yeah, I feel young in the sport. But after, I think yes. I might go for some fancy dress world records. <laughs> how did dealing with what you dealt with over the winter, how has that changed you? It was, it was horrible. Like, it was just more, it got to the point where I was like, do you know what, if I can't compete again, that's fine. Like, I just need to be pain-free. It was so painful. Like, I couldn't sit like this, right. no way. So I just spent my whole time, like, lying on my bed. And like, I couldn't walk our dog, couldn't go, like, I couldn't drive the car. Like, right. I'd spent three months on the back seat lying down. I was like, oh, my and, God. And people like, don't get it because the reality is it's not just that. When you don't, when you can't sleep, oh, you be become a different person. I'm moody. Well, <laughs> out of control, moody, yeah. right? It can, it, it's, it's not healthy. Yeah. And, like, so I, I did throw myself into the swim. But they got to a point where I was like, just want to start at least doing something else 
Um, and the lifeguards were sick of me. They're like, God, you're back again. And like our pool timetable is quite strict still around COVID. So I do our squad swim, which I'm really fortunate to be a part of at the, in Loughborough. Right. Um, and then I do a public swim. Um, and you could only have like an hour slot. Um, and it's quite hard to book on. So sometimes like I do our squad swim at like, we'd finish at like 9 a.m. And the only available space is like one o'clock. So like, it's not much of a gap to go back swimming. Um, so I was like, but I just, now I'm so grateful and I just feel like you just live in the present because you just don't know what's around the corner. Like I, I didn't think I'd have three months of not being able to sit. <laughs> it's been so much pain. Now you're at the world championship. Now I'm at the world right champs. We're right here at the finish line, right? Yeah, I'm right at the finish line. Can see it all getting set up. I literally get goose pimples. Like, this is what I want to do. I want to be racing the best in the world. It brings out the best in you. I want to be at beautiful, stunning locations. We love absolutely just living the dream, like traveling the world, meeting people like you guys. Um, and yeah, just very grateful to be here. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to racing. Love it. Nikki, have a great one. Thank you very much, and happy 42nd anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Nikki Bartlett has been our guest, everybody. Pacho Man. Take us home. Oh, don't worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing. Because everything is going to be gonna be all right. Because it's breakfast with Bob. Pancho Man. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in.